September 29th, 2019. Joe here at Simple Life Show, simplelifemedy.org is the website. I appreciate everybody for stopping in today. I have had David Hogg on the mind here recently. Uh, ever since Greta Thunberg has been in the news, I've been thinking, what has David Hogg been up to? So I decided to look at his Twitter. Of course, I was not disappointed. Of course, I haven't. I have only looked over the past maybe week or so. This kind of stuck out. A few uh, tweets here. We'll try to get into this whole gun thing, the AR-15, and all that kind of stuff. Because a lot of things have been said over the past few days that you may not be aware of. But we'll get into that. David Hogg here is uh, has a, a kind of a unity type of uh, tweet here. I know from meeting thousands of Americans of all different beliefs over the past year that a reality. A, that in reality, a vast majority of Americans are a kind and reasonable people that actually do like working together. It's just that political parties like to convince us otherwise. Of course, he's not throwing the Democrats under the bus. It's just the Republicans. And of course, the NRA, he goes further by saying not the Repu- majority of Republicans, like my father formerly was, who are mainly not in office and agree asking a foreign government to help an election is wrong and listening to money rather than science is wrong as well. It's kind of a that's a really, really bad run on sentence, but we'll uh, go ahead and give him a slide on that one and give him a pass on that. Uh, he goes further. So I want to be clear. The enemies here are the Republicans in the Senate, Congress and the White House. They would rather listen to those that fund their campaigns and foreign governments that, uh, than science or facts. I, I, I'm not really exactly sure what he's talking about guns or what he's talking about the climate. I think that he is just mad in general. OK, so he kind of goes further here. So he's sorry to be so partisan, but I'm so effing mad. Our children are dying. Our president is committing treason. Of course, there is no proof of that. Our planet is on fire. That is not true either. Uh, Republicans are doing nothing. This is not true. The Republicans are not just doing nothing. There has been several types of common sense gun reform legislation and ideas that have come out of the White House and also Republican friends in Congress. The Republican, the Democrats are refusing to listen to. They're refusing to even talking about it. And they don't say they don't say anything about this in the main the mainstream media, because then if we know that the Democrats are really not really interested in passing common sense gun legislation, then, you know, what's what would be the point? You know, all you know, they're 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 going to be running entirely on this impeachment type of foundation platform, whatever you want to call, because that is what the horde wants, and they know this. That's why Nancy Pelosi didn't wait. She said, "Just screw it. I'm just going to go ahead and just I'm just going to throw everything in in, in in with the kitchen sink and keep going forward with this." And we know this. He keeps going forward here. You know what will actually make America great? This is the worst one here. Republicans hated racism violence and corruption as much as they hate women i don't know where this is coming from i mean this is this is uh this is kind of in the the the, the center of all this republican hating i get that but where does this the, how much they hate women i mean is david hawk completely blind i think he is because the trump administration has more women than any other administration before and you can look this up trump loves trump loves women he loves hiring women there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't know where this, all this unfounded hate is coming from. And that's really what it all boils down to is this unfounded hate. We're going to get into the, the meat of what we're talking here is this next post here. At, you know, obviously, he is at a gun hearing uh, violence uh, committee. And he is doing video here say, uh, at a hearing on gun violence here. This was September 26th. It was actually on September 25th is when the hearing actually happened. And we're, we're going to share some of that here with you in a second. Not even one Republican showed up. That is not true. This is, this is all the preamble uh, for, the, uh, for that uh, committee hearing. And you can, see, you can see Republicans already there. They're already there. And by the time this thing starts, all seats are filled. David Hogg is a liar. We all know this. He wants to, he wants to share this stuff on social media. And he wants us to believe, or he wants his viewers to believe, look at this, you know, I believe this had uh, 837,000 views, 736 comments, 9,000 retweets, 32,000 likes or loves or whatever Twitter likes to call it. This is ridiculous. This is just, this is, uh, David Hogg is, 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 is doing more fake news. He's doing the fake news for the media himself right now. So we're going to get into this, uh, this whole, now he doesn't actually really talk too much about this. Really? He doesn't, he doesn't say anything about what actually went down at this committee, but we will get into that here in a second here. I wanted to talk about some mass shootings 
in the uh, the U.S. Here, I decided to look this up. Here, there was a uh, article that recently came out, September first. There have been more mass shootings than days this year. What has recently happened, according to the Gun Violence Archive, the GVA, is that they have redefined what it means to be a mass shooting. They're not. There, there's there's different. There, there there are different categories now. There's mass shootings, and there's mass killings. Understand this. This is something new. This is these are this is what happens with the uh, the changing of the definitions. If if it, if it is a mass shooting, you don't even have to have people killed. All all you have to do is have four or more. That is including the actual shooter. So if the shooter shoots himself and three other people. That is what is considered a mass shooting. There are a lot of mass shootings in the U.S., and they're mainly in a lot of a lot of the uh, highly urban areas, like Chicago, like Los Angeles, like Boston, like New York. New York has actually done a pretty good job of decreasing the amount of violence and 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 uh, mass shootings, but it, they're still happening all over the place. This is this is not something new. They have changed the definitions to make it seem like it's worse than it really is. Now, what are they going after? They're not going after the semi-automatic pistols, but we'll get into that because I believe they are. They're not going after the hunting rifles. I believe they are. No, they, they, they say they're going after the AR-15s and the AK-47s, right? But this is not true. They are going after every single gun out there because they want them all. Okay, and they're changing the definitions of what's going on here. I decided to go through just the 2019. I started, you can see here, if you go to gunviolencearchive.org, and I'll put a, uh, I, will, I will put a link in the description. If you go to the mass shootings 2019, of course, it has killed and injured. It says, you know, the, the date it occurred, state, uh, address, and so forth. Uh, here on the operations, you can view the incident source. Uh, to view the source, which would be the article or wherever they got the information, you can view uh, kind of the the rundown of the incident. Now, if you open this up, I'll go ahead and just open up one. I had them all open because I was looking at all of them. It might take a, a second here for it to open. But if you uh, if you look at this, okay, so this was this happened in January seventeenth in Kentucky. There was uh, one, two, three, four whole bunch of victims here, right? And let me see, three dead and one shot at home, two schools put on lockdown, one gun involved. You will see this uh, over and over on this website, which I saw, one gun involved, unknown. They don't know what gun it was. I call BS on that because it was probably just a regular pistol, which you can see over and over if you actually look through all of these mass shootings now of course the horrible ones are on there as well the one in el paso dayton um the one in california here recently where a whole bunch of people got killed you can see that that there was an ak-47 you saw a ar-15s and stuff like that but how many were actually on here how many mass shootings you have 13 pages right i only counted three maybe four that used in a, in a quote unquote assault style, which they're conf, you know saying is AR-15 or AK-47 platform. But how many were there? They're they're making this claim that there's all of these mass shootings, and people are people uh, assume that they're all assault style weapons. They are not. They are either they they are they primarily they are pistols. They are nine millimeters. They are Smith, uh, they're uh, forty caliber Smith and Wessons and stuff like that. Okay, and even if they're long rifles, there was actually a long rifle in here, a twenty-two long rifle that was used in in one that had a lot of killings. So, I would highly recommend looking this up because it's really interesting. Here, I, there's another article: Are AR-15s a? Because this is really what the uh, conversation's all about right now. Are the AR-15 style rifles, AK-47s, uh, Kalashnikovs, and all that stuff, are they really a public safety threat? And here's what the data really says. And I see we we see we've seen this data before. We've actually we've seen this before. Uh, according to the uh, the BJS uh, Bureau of Justice Statistics, the CDC reports. 
uh, reproduce more accurate homicide trends at a national level because they capture less underreporting than FBI statistics. If we go down to where some of this uh, information is disseminated between 2007 and 2017, nearly 1,700 people were murdered with a knife or sharp, uh, sharp object per year. That's almost four times the number of people murdered uh, by an assailant with any sort of rifle, not just an AR-15 or a K-47. We see here that there is a slight uptick over the last few years, but we also see that it's only about 1%, and it's adjusted right here too as well. Of course, it's, it's, a, it's about a 1% jump either way, whether it's adjusted or not, anywhere between 35 to 2.5% of all, uh, of all homicides, percent of all homicides are used with all types of rifles that's not just ar-15 that's just that's all types of rifles that's any kind of long rifle and if you if you look at ar-15s and ak-47s then it would be much less probably like one and a half maybe two percent the the problem here is you know we all know this the problem is that you know we look at uh, anytime uh, something like you know dayton happens anytime something like el paso happens we get really scared and when we have a lot of mass casualties, we, we automatically want to have a knee jerk reaction and start just banning stuff. It's like it's 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 our motherly instinct to just kind of safety proof everything and uh, put bubble wrap on the entire world because we don't want our baby to get a boo boo. OK, this is uh, this is false logic. This is not going to help. And we are going to get into this uh, this committee hearing that happened here. We see David Hogg. Uh, you know, posting this where no Republicans showed up. This was absolutely false. We're going to get into this. Uh, the first video up here is that uh, I think was probably one of the most important videos where they're actually really talking about the definitions of the guns and how we should just ban them all. Now, you have to kind of read between the lines because they're not ever going to say we want to ban all guns, but it's going to keep going back to it over and over and over again. Thank the gentleman. We'll now proceed under the five-minute rule with questions. I'll begin with by recognizing myself for five minutes. Uh, Ms. Rand, there are certain features that distinguish assault weapons from hunting rifles. Earlier this month, this committee reported out a bill by Representative Deutsch that would ban large-capacity magazines. Uh, during the uh, 1994 ban, uh, people got around the ban by uh, various means. How should we define a, uh, an assault rifle that, that we might want to ban uh, in order to get around the easy adaptability of such weapons uh, by putting on various parts or some other way? Uh, thank you for your question, Chairman Nadler. I think the major problem with the 94 law is that it defined an assault rifle, for example, by the ability to take a detachable ammunition magazine, which is the most important and most deadly feature, and then required two additional listed assault rifle features, such as a pistol grip on, or a bayonet lug. And basically what the industry did was take off one of the more superfluous um, factors like a bayonet lug, but they could retain the pistol grip, which allows the shooter to have better control during rapid fire. So if we go to what's known as a one characteristics test um, and clearly define those characteristics that define an assault weapon, and assault weapons also include assault pistols and assault shotguns, then we'll be on much firmer footing. And that would, that would eliminate these whip, these whip these weapons that we commonly refer to as assault weapons and that uh, can cause these mass casualties? Yes, I believe that a, a good definition coupled with an effective magazine ban, you cannot overstate the importance of a magazine ban, um, would do the job to ban assault weapons. I really want you to listen to, now this is going to be a kind of a lengthy video, so I've got a couple, uh, this was a four hour long marathon of both Republicans and Democrats uh, asking questions, doing their speeches and so forth. I watched most of it, a lot of the, uh, the good parts, and I wanted to disseminate some of that information to you. I'm going to be fair. I'm going to give the Democrats a few, uh, a few clips here, but most of the times when uh, the Democrats are really talking, they are appealing to just simply emotion. They are talking about the children. Why aren't you thinking about the children? We need to think about the children and all that kind of stuff. This is going to be constantly, this is a constant type of 
uh, neuro-linguistic programming that is happening where if we think about guns, then we're going to be starting to think about, well, we have to protect the children so we can't have guns. That is, that's, that's, that's false logic. We have to have some sort of way to protect ourselves so we can protect the children. But uh, if, if you listen to what that, that I, I, I included that as the first video because it really sets the tone. Because if you really listen to that, and I, I invite you to just rewind and listen to that again, she is really talking about banning all guns. She is, she's talking about banning any type of magazine, anything that has repetitive uh, shooting action. Okay, this is really, this is really what they want. Okay, and, and, and we'll see as we continue here in, in, the, in, in the forthcoming clips that this is really what they're talking about. They want to, to, uh, to ban almost all guns, if not all guns. And they, they just simply won't come out and say it, but they are, they, you can read between the lines. Here, this next clip, this next clip this is all about uh, you know, how all weapons at one point were part of war, and they were a weapon of war. Chairman, Ms. Uh, Ms. Muller, I have a question. Can you, I mean, just in general, what you've heard already this morning, some of the misconceptions that we frequently hear in this discussion surrounding what we call so-called the assault weapons. I'll get this down before we, get, before we end. Um, some of the things I've heard here today is we're talking about um, cosmetic things. And uh, I disagree with what I've heard here today because um, a, 22, a 22 rifle that everybody may have seen as a brown stock and something that your father may have given you, um, we can turn that into an AR platform and it look like an AR platform and you would think that this is a weapon of war. Um, these are cosmetic differences and they do not make, um, make it any different. Ms. Bobby, can I stop you right there for yes, a second? Sir. You just said something this, this often. Is it not true historically that all weapons come out of war? Then well, why are all, we continuing to say that, that this is a weapon of war? All weapons come out of war. Correct. Well, my point is that um, any firearm is lethal, is lethal force. So our, our community is all about safety and trying to educate people into how to, you know, being responsible gun owners. Uh, we're not for... Well, I think the issue is here is when you came out, you know, the old flint rock, you flint, uh, you know, muzzle loader. You come into the bolt action of the World War One. You come out. These were all started in, you know, from a, a procession of protection and for uh, enforcement, whether it be in law or, or in the war. They come from the the idea that all of a sudden they jump from war to the streets is, is you know, when they came home uh, from World War One, they wanted to use what they had used in World War One. That's what they used for hunting. This is where it's progressed. Do assault rifles? Uh, another question here. Assault rifles shoot any faster than any other semi-automatic fire? No. No, sir. They don't. Is it, one of the issues is, is uh, you served as a law enforcement officer during the time of the previous assault weapon ban from 94 to 2004. Did it have any impact on your safety as a law enforcement officer or those that you were sworn to serve and protect? No, sir. I was before, during, and after uh, the previous assault weapons ban, and I saw zero effect on me personally, and I believe the FBI statistics uh, stated that it was ineffective, and therefore, I believe you guys let it sunset. So next up, we have the red flag laws. Of course, if you don't know what the red flag laws are, I, I suggest that you look them up because they are already in effect. Okay, so if if someone suspects that you have any kind of problem, whether they really know you or not, they can they can just drop drop a dime on you. They can they can snitch you out, and the FBI or the uh, the ATF or the police or whoever can come into your house and take all your weapons from you, deny you this your your Second Amendment rights, deny you your constitutional due process, and it it will it will take months for you to get your weapons back. This committee passed on a party line vote a red flag law. Um, do you have any concerns with what this committee reported? And if so, what are they? Thank you for your question. 
Uh, so I've written fairly extensively on red flag laws, and while I, I agree that there may be a place for targeted intervention for people who are objectively dangerous, whether due to mental illness or other reasons, uh, there are serious concerns with policies such as the ones that, that have recently come out of this body. Uh, part of that is a complete lack of due process. So we are talking about uh, taking away, even temporarily, a fundamental constitutional right. There need to be uh, very high burdens of proof. There need to be uh, objective, narrow measures as to what's constituting dangerousness. Uh, there, there need to be, with regard to things like ex parte orders, uh, quick follow-up, not uh, allowing people to wait 30 days before they have their hearing after already infringing on their constitutional rights. Uh, we need to ensure that there are provisions for the restoration of those rights. Uh, and things like that are, are vitally important, and they are not measures that I've seen um, adequately imposed in many of these bills. And I'm sure you follow this from last week, that, that we really took two bills and we, we did what we do up here a lot, and that sandwiched it into a same bill, and which created a lot of problems. Um, and I think one of the issues was, you know, jurisdictional influence, you know, forum shopping, is that something else that's concerning in this, from what was passed out here to that actually would solve anything that we're looking at? Uh, well, so my understanding of the one that was passed is that it would essentially be state type grants. Uh, well, it did until states. we added on the federal side of it. We yeah, actually when, when, when we're looking at federal type of, of red flag laws, I mean, one of the big things should be follow up in terms of like mental health um, uh, treatment, you know, ensuring that people have a route to uh, you know, have their rights restored to them. And so part of the problem is jurisdictional. You don't have that at a federal level the way you do at a state level. Um, and frankly, it's, it's not really a federal jurisdictional okay. type of issue. And I appreciate it. So, yeah, like she was really talking about here, the red flag laws are very dangerous constitutionally. Next up, of course, we have on the end, we have a doctor. He is a uh, thoracic, probably, I think a thoracic surgeon. He does a lot of... Um, gunshot wounds and stuff like that. Now, of course, they had to include him because we need, we obviously need a medical opinion on this. And of course, yeah, he he did uh, do his uh, kind of intro type of thing where he was talking about a lot of the gunshot wounds from AK-47s and AR-15s and how they uh, how they differ with other types of gunshot wounds. Now we have a question here that is going to be posed to him about where there's different types of gun gunshots and how they are the same as well. Now, you have to understand that with the AR-15s and AK-47s, yes, they are higher velocity, lower caliber bullets. They actually will actually do more damage uh, at, a, at, at a distance and not so much right, you know, not point, you know, little bit little bit more of the point blank range you know, actually it's going so fast that it'll just you know do you know actually go right through uh but he will uh he will ask him a question about this i think this is kind of revealing as well and your well, testimony is very compelling on this but isn't it true also that a 357 magnum and a hot with a hollow point bullet or a 44 magnum with a hollow point bullet would also cause catastrophic damage as just you have seen also from a uh, to my understanding, yes, there has oh. cavitary lesions from, from those types of uh, weapons as well. So, again, so I guess if from your testimony on how bad this is, if you really want to do away with what you saw, you need to get rid of all guns, correct? No. I'm not advocating for anything like that. I'm just telling you what I, I, appreciate what it, I but, see. But they are similar, and I think that's the only point I was trying to make, is there are similar concussions from different guns, which nobody's talking about taking away up here. And I think they're very similar when you look at it. Thank you for your testimony. Again, thank you for your work. Next up, we have a, uh, a kind of an explanation about the uh, weapons ban that happened between 94 and 2004. And it's just kind of a reiteration how uh, there was no effect on total violence. Um, I wasn't yet a member of this body when the uh, 94 uh, gun ban was passed. Um, I was elected that year and sworn in the, the following year. Um, but uh, as a strong support of the Second Amendment. I would not have uh, voted for that at the time. Um, and I, I would note that uh, when the, uh, the so-called assault weapons ban was in place, it was 94 to 2004, I would note that that is when the Columbine uh, shooting took place, right in the middle of that. I think it was 99, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think contrary to the majority's belief, um, there's really no conclusive evidence uh, that the weapons ban had any appreciable effect on, on mass shootings or violent crime. Um, Ms. Swear, uh, would you want to 
comment on that? Is that, is that your understanding as well? Uh, thank you, Congressman. That is my understanding, and that was the understanding of uh, those who released the official report uh, on the after, after the, uh, the ban expired. What they actually found was that should it be renewed, it would be unlikely to have any meaningful uh, or, or measurable effect, in part because, as I noted previously, these types of firearms are rarely used to commit crimes in the first place. It's actually handguns and non-assault weapons that are uh, historically and, and still to this day Day, uh, most often used to commit crimes. Thank you. So next up, uh, obviously, we, we have heard over and over and over again that the AR-15s and AK-47s and, you know, the civilian, quote unquote, civilian types of uh, modifications and the, uh, the platforms that are sold still um, in a lot of the gun stores today, they are weapons of war. And we have already we have already discussed that they are not weapons of war. And uh, we'll get into that just a little bit. Ms. Miller, could, could you uh, describe some of the misconceptions uh, that you frequently hear when it comes to the discussion uh, surrounding so-called assault weapons? Uh, one of the things that when, when we talk about weapon of war, I hear it being a weapon of war. First of all, um, war, anything can be used as a weapon when you're in battle, I suppose. But um, the AR-15 specifically, I have friends that have served in combat roles, and they have told me that that is not a desirable round. They do not like the AR-15, the 223, or the 556. Um, this is their personal opinion, but they would much prefer to carry a 308 or something with uh, greater stopping power. Okay, thank you. And, and the, the guns that we're discussing here uh, this morning, do people use uh, these uh, for, uh, to, to hunt? Do they use them for self-defense? Are they suitable for both? Um, could you comment on that? Yes, sir. Um, we certainly use them in my family. We use them for both. And I will have to be the law-abiding citizen that does have a, a pistol AR, and I choose that because it is more compact and it does give me the greater uh, capacity. And the, the more... It's just a better defensive firearm, and it fits better in my car and my vehicle that I'm traveling in. So it's a lot. It's a little bit easier to move around, but I get the same advantages of uh, the AR. Thank you very much. So I don't know if you actually had a uh, chance to look at some of the uh, the reactions of the people sitting next to these two women. Of course, they aren't the only ones that are speaking out and in favor of the Second Amendment. The uh, gentleman to her left was uh, kind of smirking and laughing the whole way. The uh, woman to the other woman's left or her right was just giving her a look of total disdain throughout this entire thing. But I think that we're getting really to the heart of what really the problem is. The problem is mental illness. It's not so much the weapon. You know, for a lot of these highly, highly mentally ill people, the people that are so far gone that they would commit such atrocities, what type of weapon are they going to go for? Well, it really doesn't matter, okay? They're going to go after any weapon at all. So the real problem here is that we really need to get to the, the, the crux of what the issue here is, and that is really what it is. It's mental illness. And taking, the, taking everyone's rights away because someone is mentally ill, especially when it only accounts for 1% of actually 1% to 2% of actually all the... Uh, uh, the gun homicides in this country every single year is absolutely illogical and it's just it's it, it's without any grounds and it's it, there's no debate there congressman that is absolutely my opinion and it is very clear when you look at uh, mass public shooters what you see is is much higher rates of untreated serious mental illness so people um, who either like one-fourth of mass public shooters uh, have been diagnosed with a serious mental illness um, or as two-thirds of them have, uh, what you're actually seeing is, is people who are not in a mentally stable place even if they haven't been officially diagnosed with any sort of mental illness. Um, but we, these are, uh, by and large, individuals who are not in a good uh, mental place, who are showing clear signs of being a danger to themselves or others, uh, where you know, th there's room for intervention with them, and so that is one of the avenues we have to look at: um, is how do we actually treat those underlying problems uh, and, and intervene in an effective, narrow way, specifically for those dangerous individuals. 
So we have to really understand here is that there are a lot of different types of what they want to say is myths that's going on. One of the myths that they say is a myth is that they're that the good guy with the gun uh, gun can stop a bad guy with the gun. That is just pure logic. There has been so many uh, studies that have been done uh, about good guys with a gun that have stopped mass shootings. They have stopped people from killing other people. They uh, people have been used uh, using weapons to prevent all types of crimes throughout all uh, you know all of history of weapons in general or guns in general this is just this is just pure logic okay but the democrats and 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 and, and of course unfortunately the police officer here uh, cuz there's plenty of there's uh, actually I believe two police officers one that's in pink and the one's actually in full uniform uh well she well she'll be questioned about this and of course, she gets a thunderous applaud when she when she talks about just taking away the gun, and that will solve everything. It's it's it, it just makes no sense. Your group that, that assault weapons should not be sold in this country. Absolutely, and what is actually is disingenuous is that we're arguing about terminology when you're looking down the face of a high powered high velocity weapon. Do you really want to ask? Is it an AR, an AK, and can you pull it one? Um, trigger at a time, or is it a semi-automatic, or is it something more? Um, I also say the same thing is, when we're talking about even arguing, uh, um, pushing back against a only person that should stop a bad person with a gun is a good person with a gun. Um, actually, what stops a bad person with a gun is keeping a gun out of their hands to start with. Um, and ask that from any law enforcement officer who's ever had to look down the face of a barrel. Go tell Okay, so then we we get into we get into a lot of emotional stuff when it comes to Democrats, and we know this. We've seen this all the time. Everything is about emotion. Nothing is about facts. So you notice that every time that a Democrat, if you if you want to watch this entire thing, feel free. You know, if you want to waste four hours, I'm trying to disseminate most of this stuff to you and trying to get at really what the heart is going on. The Democrats are all about emotion, and the Republicans they might not be Republicans. They might just be. You know, they might be classically liberal. They might be a libertarian. They might be a free agent. Who cares? They're the rational thinking person uh, likes, you know, more than often sticks to the facts. OK, and that's what we're not seeing from the Democrats. It's all about emotion. And of course, you know, in, in Democrat fashion, of course, Trump is in the news with everything. We can't stop from bringing up Trump. And this is actually one of the, the funniest clips here. And I'll play it here in a second. Is Colt the exclusive manufacturer of AR-15s? No, they are not. Um, we have a, a variety of uh, ways that you can uh, acquire uh, an AR-15 model. Uh, there are imported ones. But Colt has decided not to produce any more, manufacture any more. Is that right? They describe the market as flooded, and it's my um, belief that it's flooded by foreign-made uh, ARs and uh, the ability to make one your own now. Are some of those, would the, any of those be coming from Russia? Um, the, the Russian model that I'm familiar with would be more an AK variant. 40, AK-47? Yep. Are they, are they sold here? Um, they're not only sold here, they're now manufactured in this country, if you're ca talking about Kalishnikov. How long is that, have they been manufactured here? Um, I don't, I'm not certain. Okay. Uh, a few years ago, I was in Russia, maybe three years ago, and there was an effort then by the Russian government to try to change our policies and get more Kalishnikov sold in this country. Do you know what they would have been trying to do? This was before the election of President Trump. Uh, I was there with, uh, during Obama's term. Sure. I'm aware that um, companies like Kalishnikov found it advantageous to build the guns here in America to not have to deal with some of the import issues. And was there a restriction on them uh, manufacturing here? Um, I'm not aware. Okay. Do you know anything that's happened during the Trump administration that might have benefited Kalishnikov? I am not. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's obviously Trump's fault that there's all kinds of uh, AKs over here. Of course, the AK platform has been here for a long time before Trump was ever president. I'm not exactly sure why this was even brought up. I think that he just really wanted to say the word Trump somewhere because every every democrat just hates trump just because they hate trump okay here here's the thing and i'll get to the uh the, the knockout punch here in this last video this last clip but uh what i really what i really want to get around to saying here is that that uh, the democrats like i said they want to focus mainly on the emotion they don't want to they, they don't want to focus on the facts that the ak's and the ar-15s they are they are not as as uh as scary as as they want you to believe they are 
They are they are weapons just like any other weapon. They are weapons just like any other long rifle. Okay, they can just they can do just as much damage as any other weapon. Okay, that that is just something that that they don't want to tell you. They don't want to uh, they don't want to uh, to have that out in the public. They want to focus on all of the emotional appeal to to get the hordes of the unread and the 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 illogical groups of these. These new liberals, these progressive liberals that are out there that are that are pushing for a lot of this, you know, this a lot of a, a lot of these uh, fascist types of uh, these policies, uh, especially when it comes to guns, because the more that the, the more that these guns, uh, the more these gun policies are actually pushed forward. And you know, if we go down this road of actually taking away the weapons, then it's if we go down that road there, there it, it's a Pandora's box that we will never be able to close again. We will no longer have a Second Amendment once we go down this road. It's a very, very, very slippery slope. And I, I'm sorry that, that we do have violence in this country. That's a bad thing, and I, I wish there wasn't any violence. But that is just a reality of the world that we live in. And since we live in that reality, we cannot legislate our way, our way out of it. We cannot legislate our way out of mental illness. We cannot legislate our way out of immorality and, and, and doing bad things against other people. We have to be prepared for such things. And this next clip... Uh, kind of drives that entire point home when it comes to uh, hunting rifles and, and what they really want to do. And I think he does a really good job at this. And, you know, do you think that hunting rifles ought to be banned uh, if they are semi-automatic? Let's start with you, Mayor Whaley. Thank you, Representative. My, my point here today is just to, to reiterate that constitutional rights require responsibility and balance. And the people of Dayton also have the right to be you safe. you give me a yes or no answer on whether hunting rifles ought to be banned if we don't define this correctly? I think that this body will define this correctly. And What's I think opinion? that that will have... Uh, not that you're asking what our opinion is. Uh, Dr. Tovar, we, we got no answer from Mayor Whaley on whether hunting rifles ought to be banned. So that, let the record state that, Dr. Tovar. So the question is, should hunting rifles be banned? Yes. That's the question? Yes. I agree yes that no. there should be a definition of what um, a so-called assault rifle is, mm -hmm. a so-called um, weapon Let's answer that... answer the question. You know, if, if you have this definition, you know, of a semi-automatic uh, uh, firearm that looks bad because, you know, it's got a, you know, a shoulder uh, a thing and, you know, something that, you know, people can point. I don't own any firearms, so I'm not uh, defining this correctly. But I'm, you know, I not, was not elected to uh, uh, sit here, you know, and tell people who like to hunt that all of a sudden the firearm that they have been using legally according to state DNR regulations, you know, ends up being banned because we in Congress think it should be. Now, should we write a definition that is so broad that hunting rifles will be banned? I think, yes or a, no? I think a definition should be made as terms of what should be legal and what should hey, not. Well, you're not answering the question. Uh, Chief Brackney, yes or no? Thank you for the question. I believe any weapon that can be used to hunt individuals um, should be banned. Well, that's not what the Virginia DNR says, uh, Ms. Rand. We think that you can clearly distinguish assault rifles from sporting hunting rifles. And just because you can hunt with an AR-15 does not make it a hunting rifle. But say, having said that, we do not support a ban on true hunting firearms. Uh, rifles. Okay, well, I will put that down as a question mark. Ms. Swearer. If the question is whether the hunting rifles should be banned just because they are semi-automatic, the answer is no. I, and I would point out that, again, when we're talking about functional difference between hunting rifles and assault weapons, we're not talking about lethality, we're not talking about caliber, we're talking about things like pistol grips and barrel shrouds that don't change the functional mechanics. And so I, I would say, no, we shouldn't be banning hunting rifles just because they have pistol grip okay, and they're easier to use. Ms. Muller, then my time will be up. No. I yield back. So, yeah, I mean, I think that really just kind of just drives a whole point home here where 
he's talking about, and I, it's, it's a brilliant question, and I'll leave it at that. It's a really brilliant question because if we're talking about banning semi-automatic weapons because they look like assault rifles, we have to really talk about what the definition is. And then that's where he brilliantly comes up with this question. Well, if, all, if the hunting rifles that are specifically used and are bought for the specific reason for hunting. Now that also, that also brings up another question who says that when people are getting AR 15s, they're not using that not only for sporting, but they are using for, for hunting as well for small game hunt, because that is specifically what they are designed for. And a lot of people don't want to say, I mean, if you go into any type of gun store, and you say, I want to, I, I, I want a small game hunting rifle. They will take you to the AR 15s. Okay. If, if you listen to what she listen to what the, one of the women there that was on the Democrat side, well, I don't know if she's a Democrat, but she was, you know, she was obviously anti gun. But if you were listening to what she says, well, just because you're using an AR 15 for hunting, doesn't make it a hunting rifle. Absolutely. It does. If you're using a can opener to open a can, that makes it a can opener. If you're using, I mean, that's, it's, it's all about definitions and, 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 and it's, you get lost in the, the, the whole, the whole point of this thing. And that's, and if you're going to start taking away guns, and if you're going to start taking away semi-automatic rifles then you have to take away them all because, and then once you start taking away semi-automatic rifles, then you're like, well, just like what the first video says and what, what the first woman alluded to that you know you should start banning all types of shotguns you should start banning all types of pistols as well it will not end once that door is open once they have an assault rifle ban then the definitions will automatically change and we'll we'll be on that slippery slope where everything will be banned and we'll only be left with uh, six shooter or five shooter revolvers i guarantee you mark my words once that happens we will be left with revolvers if we're lucky until next time, this is Joe with Simple Life Show. I'm sorry it took so long there, but I think this is really important uh, to, uh, to kind of disseminate this information. Until next time, have a great day. Bye.